Okay, guys, let's do it. It's time to own some noobs. Ow, what is that? Oh, hand crap. Time out, guys. Time out. Oh, what is that? Oh, damn you, Tartarus. Hi guys, Katima Gaming here, and today we are doing a review of the Razer Tartarus Pro after using it for six months. But before anything else, I'd like to say that this is episode three of four episodes that I am currently making on Razer products. I recently did a review of the Razer Basilis X Hyperspeed, and before that, I also did a review, oops, wrong side, sorry, <laughs> of the Black Widow V3 TKL. Then episode four after this will be the conclusion episode of my entire experience with Razer products, all the links down below. Okay, so the Razer Tartarus Pro, what is it? Well, people call this a keypad, um, a gaming pad, gaming keypad. I'm not really sure, but the best description I can give you is that it's an alternate keyboard multifunction macro extension accessory. Yeah, it's a lot of things and it's not a lot of things. Basically, it's a keyboard accessory. It extends the functions of your keyboard or it can be an alternate to your keyboard for gaming most commonly in the was zone okay because of this gaming keypads became a thing it's not popular it's not common you don't see it every day but yeah it's a thing. Uh, people buy this stuff as an alternate to their keyboard, so actually it's a niche product for very specific kinds of gamers. And of course, Razer introduced their own spin to the gaming keypad. There have been four products before the Tartarus Pro, the Tartarus V1 and V2, the Nostromo, and the Orb Weaver. And in 2019, the Tartarus Pro finally hit mainstream. I know I'm late to the party with this review, but with all the tech here, man, it doesn't look like it's gonna go obsolete anytime soon. So on to the review and as I mentioned it's a gaming keypad that serves as an extension or as an alternate to your keyboard. It's made mostly out of hard good quality plastic and a rubber wrist rest that is adjustable actually in two levels. Depending on your comfort preferences, at the end of the day, it really isn't about the size of your hand, but what you're actually comfortable with. There are 19 keys on the top with a big one at the bottom, and the keys are actually made of ABS plastic, similar to the Black Widow keyboard. There is also a scroll wheel over here to the right side, which isn't the best in the world, but it does the job. And it also has a button on the scroll wheel, uh, similar to the middle button of the scroll wheel on the mouse. The thumb section also has a directional stick, which can be used for movement. Now this is for navigation, but it's not just your regular uh, four direction up, down, left, right. It's actually eight directions, okay? So you can also remove the stick and you can turn it into a D-pad still with eight directions. Lastly, you also have a profile switcher right here, which can switch up to eight profiles. And I'm happy to inform you that the Tartarus Pro also comes with a very nice and satisfyingly long braided cable. All of the keys in the Tartarus Pro is reprogrammable and remappable to your own desire. Not only do you have eight profiles that you can switch on the go, but don't forget that this also comes with HyperShift, giving all of your keys an alternate function. So the possibilities pff, is just endless. But we're not done yet. Oh, speaking of secondary or alternative functions, you can also assign different functions for every key on different actuation points. What does this mean? So basically, if you press lightly, you can assign it to one function. And if you press deeper, you assign a secondary function. So say the most obvious application for this is you're, you're playing a character and you can assign pressing it gently as walk. And then if you can also assign, uh, if you press it all the way down, down, you can assign it to running. What? The Tartarus Pro is sporting Razer's latest analog optical switches. This is where your money starts coming in. So unlike mechanical switches that activate via a physical mechanism, 
optical switches uses infrared light. That's right, infrared lights are active with this keyboard right now while it's on. Yeah, right now there are 20 infrared lights shooting forward on this keypad as we speak. The keys, when it's in idle position, is blocking the light, and when it's pressed down, it unblocks the light, sending the light towards a sensor instantaneously and, you know, sending a keystroke signal to the computer. That's extreme. It's so sci-fi. I didn't even believe it at first, but hey, Tartarus even goes further. We just talked about how optical switches work, but what about analog optical switches? The term is borrowed from the Joy-Con itself having analog sticks and analog triggers. That means that you can adjust the level of intensity of whatever action you're doing. Take this um, Xbox controller for example. If I gently push the analog stick, these are analog sticks. If I gently push it forward, let's say I start walking and you know, the further I push it forward, the faster I start walking or running. Similar to the triggers as well, if I just hold it just a little bit, I'm feathering the brakes maybe, or maybe feathering the acceleration here left and right. So yeah, these are called analogs. This keypad does exactly that. Regular keyboards only have one action for every key. Accelerate, brake, left and right, for example. They're all on the extreme ups and downs, but the Tartarus can detect the intensity of every action based on how far you actually press it down. If you look at this example from Forza, using a regular keyboard only gives me single actions to control my car. Extremely up, extremely down, all the way left, all the way right. Using an Xbox controller gives me full control over my movement here, how hard I turn, how much acceleration could be applied, they're all pressure sensitive. The Tartarus does exactly that, analog meaning full control, and optical meaning fast response. This may look like a regular fancy accessory, but it walks the talk. This is all applicable to games like GTA, Ace Combat, Flight Simulator, and Elite Dangerous, just to name a few. Oh, did I forget to mention it's also full RGB? Oh yeah, Razer Synapse with the chrome lighting option. You can sync this bad boy with all other Razer product. It looks stunning, and you know what? It, if you have people coming over, uh, they'll go and have a look at this and say like, what in the world is that? It complements your keyboard so well. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you game, you can get rid of the keyboard entirely and create so much space to move your mouse around. This is especially great if you're gaming on a laptop. So it seems like I'm really raving a lot about this product. Should you buy it now, right? You know, Razor, take my money. <laughs> But no, wait a sec. Like I said, this is a niche product, so it might not be for you at the end of the day. Uh, disclaimer though, these are all my personal opinion after using it for six months. So the things I really found, uh, you know, undesirable about this is first things first, the wrist rest. Okay, it's not adjustable. Like I said, um, you can only adjust it onto two levels depending on your comfort preference. I personally don't even use it. You know, I only put this on for show, but when I'm really using it, I actually take it off because I can adjust the comfort level myself with my own wrist rest. Button number 20 is also difficult to use. It most likely serves as a space bar or jump button, but getting to it is so uncomfortable. If I do adjust my hand lower to hit the space bar comfortably, I won't be able to reach the top row of keys. Look, I have a standard Asian male hand size, okay? So unless you're Kawhi Leonard or Giannis, okay? This is not comfortable to use at all. As a compromise though, I use the directional sticks to jump instead, which I admit is much faster than hitting the spacebar even on a regular keyboard. Comparing the keypad to a keyboard, Control and Alt are also missing, meaning you'll need to actually adjust and rebind them. I don't know about the others, but I do get a lot of hand fatigue when playing games for long hours on this thing. If you look at the difference between a normal keyboard and a Tartarus, the hand positions are very different. Six months in and I still could not get the hang uh, of this keypad. It felt very stretched out, so I recommend you actually go into the stores to feel it out first because really, this is not for everyone. At the end of the day though, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, it's really about your hand size. If your hand size is big enough to actually handle and feel comfortable with the Tartarus Pro. But the truth is no, it's really up to the person whether they feel comfortable using this for gaming in long hours or not. Not 
about hand size. A little bit on the technical side, the secondary function is also not very usable. Okay, so yes, pressing lightly and pressing lower has two separate functions, that's really cool, but it also means that the second function requires a sequence. You can't reach the second function without activating the first function. So let's say walk then run, crouch then prone. These are all contextual uh, sequences. That's fine. Maybe buff and heal in MMOs. Maybe equip and use maybe. I don't know. These are very, very advanced that I don't really see myself using it that much. And I am a believer in the philosophy that any function that's not used is money wasted. Okay, so it's like buying the latest iPad to watch Netflix. Yeah, that's it. Yes, mom, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm kidding, mom. I love you. Okay, please don't forget my Christmas gift. <laughs> also, we talked about the analog and how unique it truly is, but if you own a controller already, it's definitely more comfortable than the Tartarus. I mean, nothing feels better than being able to control your RPG character with analog sticks. Feathering your finger to actually do precise controls on your character or vehicle can feel kind of awkward because you're actually pressing down on the keys and fighting gravity at the same time, so it can get quite tedious. One of the deal breakers that I think will put a lot of people off from buying this product is that it doesn't come with onboard memory to save your profiles. Meaning, if you want to use this with other PCs, you're gonna need to download the Razer Synapse app on all those devices and log into them to have this map back to your profile. This means that the Tartarus is absolutely useless without the software. Your Razer keyboard and mouse can still function normally as default without the Razer Synapse, but without it, the Tartarus is not even worth one-third a keyboard, and not to forget the Razer Synapse is not the most reliable software out there. So I would dare say, as awesome as this product really is, it's not good for gaming, okay? It's a gimmick, it, and a very expensive one at that. At $130, you have a fancy-ass, laser-shooting, dual-functioning, pressure-sensitive analog keypad that strains your hand. As a matter of fact, if this product really is so good for gaming, why aren't eSport pros using it? I've never seen a gaming pad, yet alone a Tartarus, uh, in any tournament of any genre for that matter. The best eSport pros actually use just regular keyboards, mechanical keyboards. So it begs the question, does the Tartarus really give you an advantage? Or is it just some fancy schmancy analog optical switch? Biggest question is, is it even good for gaming at all? However, there is one thing I will say about the Tartarus Pro that really makes it worthwhile. I admit it's a gimmicky gaming accessory, but as a productive tool, wow, this baby takes the cake. Remember I said that all keys on the Tartarus are reprogrammable? Well, imagine a keyboard with macro keys on the side, only this time you have more than 20 macro keys to play around with, with just one profile, huh? If you have eight different profiles along with Hypershift, you have a keyboard extension deck for all your productive needs. Yeah, if you're the type who likes to video edit, Photoshop, do data entry, calculate grades like me on Excel spreadsheets, heck, even using it as a streaming deck on OBS, your imagination is the limit. You know, Elgato streaming deck can suck it. No offense to Elgato lovers. Uh, you have unlimited combinations across eight different profiles. Look, I'm not gonna lie, I depend on this so much to do data entry, especially when entering grades, editing videos, or assigning shortcuts. I even use this as a shortcut key for all my media needs. This baby right here is the ultimate macro keypad with amazing lighting effects as a cherry on top. In the end though, the Tartarus is overkill for all that, especially for $130, man. I, I can't recommend this, even at $100. Now, it's really too expensive. I'm not worried about what this thing can offer you. Man, it can offer you a lot of things, but I'm more worried about what you will use it for and the features you'll actually even ignore. Perhaps I should have gone with the Tartarus V2. 
you know, instead, it's half the price of the Pro and it meets my needs. I don't need all these fancy schmancy laser analog cutting edge stuff. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of programmable gaming keypads out there on the market around the ballpark of just $30 to $40. At the end of the day, I am still very grateful it's here. I'm using this actually more for my productivity needs rather than gaming. But for the money my wife spent to gift me this, I actually have this uneasy feeling that I'm not using this to the fullest. And I doubt anyone will. That's it for me, guys. Comment down below what you guys think of episode 3 out of 4. Don't forget links of all the other reviews I talked about down below. Please like and subscribe. It really helps smaller channels like mine out. And I'll see you in our past, present, and future videos. Sorry, ka. Oh, man. Damn you, Tartarus. Well, right hand, guess it's up to you now. I know, I know it's scary. I know it's dark down there, but you gotta take one for the team now, bro. Take one for the team.